welcome everyone. Um, welcome this evening to the Scully Academy Recruitment Night. We are so happy you're joining us from wherever you are joining us. I'm Joylyn Blake and I'm the director of Scully Academy and uh, I am joined by my lovely and wonderful capable colleagues, Ms. Presbytera Maria Culianos and she is the principal of our St. Raphael House of Studies and she is the manager of our tutoring center. So she manages all of our tutors. So she has great insight into um, that dimension of our opportunities for you all. And I'm joined by Miss Allison Haley, who is our technology and academic support specialist. So she knows all the details about onboarding and things like that. So um, Whatever place you are in your exploration with us, we're happy you've joined us. Whether you are committed, you already know this is a match made in heaven, welcome. And whether you're just curious, um, like, hmm, I want to see what it is that this might involve. Um, wherever you are on that continuum, we're happy that you're joining us this evening. I'm going to walk you through just some of the basics of who we are and what it is to be an instructor at Scully Academy and what that entails and what is involved to get to that point. And then we'll take at the end, we'll take your questions and comments and things like that. That And you're welcome to be putting those in the Q&A box, putting those in the chat, and we will you know, try to address those as we go along. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start us out by doing a little um, PowerPoint just to familiarize you with some of the basics of, like I said, who we are and what we do, okay? Um, the overview of Scully Academy um, is that we are characterized by restful learning. That's the calming coffee cup that you see there. We don't intend to engender any kind of frenetic pace of learning where um, people feel more uh, beat down than lifted up. So um, our, our name is not just a name, it is our philosophy of classical Christian education in a restful style. Now, as I already said, these are um, the team that you see before you here, me as the director and principal, and then, as I said, Presbyterian, the tutoring center manager, as well as the manager of our Center for Students with Learning Differences, and Allison with us tonight, who is the support and tech specialist. These other faces that you see are also crucial players on our administrative team. And um, you may be having an interaction with any one of these individuals along the pathway. Um, now, for who is it that we serve? Well, predominantly homeschooling families, not exclusively homeschooling families. Some people uh, get up really early or come home from a brick and mortar school and take classes with us. But for the most part, there are homeschooling students sort of sprinkled all over. And when I say all over, I mean all over. We have enrollments from all of the countries this year. This, all the countries that you see listed here are enrolled in our school. So yes, some people are waking up at 3 a.m. to sign on to a course with us. We follow a Eastern time zone bell schedule. I personally am not in the Eastern time zone. I'm in the Central time zone, but we all make adjustments accordingly so that we're all thinking in terms of the Eastern time zone. Um, in addition to the all these countries, obviously the, the largest country that we serve is the United States. And we have students from practically every state, uh, but these that you see listed are the top states for enrollments at Scully Academy. Um, now, for your interest, I'm sure you're wondering, well, what about your instructors? What are the stats on them? No maps to illustrate that, but you can know that we have 90 contracted instructors with us this year, and together um, they teach 258 courses, and not just um, single courses, but those courses are often broken off into multiple sections of a course. So for example, Latin one, uh, we offer eight different sections of Latin one because it is a popular one for us. So all told, there are 365 sections taught at Scully Academy. 
which gives you an idea of the scope. Now, we do not manage this on our own. We have a wonderful group of department chairs that help to um, answer questions, provide guidance and support along the way. So I thought I would just acquaint you a bit with what are our departments that instructors um, receive guidance and are fit under. Um, the first, Ms. Morgan is the director of what our writing and rhetoric department and that WOL stands for well-ordered language. Both of these are curricula that Classical Academic Press um, publishes and produces, has written and published. And so we get quite a following at Scully Academy of families who want instructors to teach these courses with these books to their, to their child. So Ms. Morgan heads up that department. Then we have a Latin department, a very robust Latin department, headed by Mr. Katinsky. We have a standard math department with, that currently does not um, use any classical academic press curricula because we haven't published math curricula yet. It's on the horizon at some point. But Dr. Riley um, heads up that department, and there are plenty of families who come to us for math instruction. Then we have a very popular and growing science department headed by Mr. Hall, and our science department um, uses in the upper school, middle and high school, the Novare science text. If you're not familiar with Novare, look it up. It's growing substantially in popularity. Um, the next department that we have is our humanities department headed by Ms. Shaltanis, and the humanities is both literature and history. Um, we offer these as separate courses, and then we offer some bundled courses of um, things that go to, uh, together, like, you know, ancient literature and ancient history, or American lit and American history. And Ms. Shaltanis oversees that department. Ms. White is the lead instructor for our logic department. We have a very popular line uh, that is published by CAP called The Art of Argument, and then also um, text on deductive reasoning, formal and informal logic. And Ms. White heads that up as the lead teacher. Then we have Ms. Meinhart, who is the chair of our Aquinas House of Studies. And then we have Ms. Bright, who is the chair of our Canterbury House of Studies. Now, I know you're asking, Aquinas and Canterbury, that does not seem like a standard department at a school. Well, I am glad you asked, friends. Um, we are no standard school. Um, we um, see ourselves in, in keeping with um, a great tradition and great ideas. And if you've read this um, passage by C.S. Lewis, he talks about Christianity being a, a great hall, and it's a great hall of tradition and ideas. But then off of that hall are these various rooms, which he means to indicate, you know, more specified traditions or denominations, where he says that's where, you know, you settle in and you can find uh, warmth and um, good things and places to sit and really dialogue. So that's how we've modeled our own, you know, virtual campus. So we have three distinct houses of studies that serve um, the great Christian traditions. Our Canterbury House is our Protestant house specifically serving and following in the Anglican tradition. The Aquinas House is our Catholic house of studies. And then the St. Raphael School is our Orthodox school. Now, for you astute observers, you may notice that two of them are called House of Studies, and one of them is called a school, and that is because St. Raphael School, the Orthodox School, was somewhat the inspiration for this to begin with. Scolay Academy was an entity. St. Raphael School was a, a separate entity, and St. Raphael was adopted or acquired and was the first child of Scully Academy um, by adoption, so to speak. And it um, has a substantial enrollment, um, a robust community, and it became the inspiration in part for these other houses of studies that, that were then built out from Scully Academy. So, you other astute observers may have seen, well, back on that department page, there was not a chair of the St. Raphael School. That's because 
Presbytera Maria serves as the principal of SRS um, because it is our largest house of studies. It serves almost 500 students. Um, the Aquinas House and the Canterbury Houses are new. They're still in their infancy, so they serve a much smaller group, um, uh, fewer than 100 in there. But our Great Hall, <laughs> where everyone um, gathers for core courses that we share together, um, the Great Hall um, has almost 2,000 students. So it's definitely the substantial population of Scully Academy and instructors. Um, congregates there in the Great Hall. Now, you want to know perhaps about like, well, these instructors, do you just work for a house of study or do you just work for a great, the Great Hall? Well, in part, the answer and the good news is that's partially up to you. Um, we work with independent contractors. So instructors and our tutors at Scully Academy are independent contractors. That means we just want to be clear and upfront about this. They're self-employed individuals contracted to perform work for or provide services to another entity as non-employees. If that sounds like legalese, it sort of is. We want everyone to be clear on um, the status as an independent contractor versus an employee, which it translated into your own vernacular, everyday vernacular. It just means we don't do Social Security or Medicare. There aren't insurance benefits provided. Um, so if that's the case, why come to contract with us and work for us? Well, what are the benefits? Because there are some, plenty, my friends. Um, for Working as an independent contractor for Scully Academy, um, you get to propose your own courses. I'm inspired to teach this. I would like to teach this. Um, so I'm going to issue you a proposal. We um, issue a request for your proposal. You give us the proposal for what you'd like to teach. And then we evaluate if we feel this would um, serve our families well and be um, a great contribution to our catalog of offerings. So um, independent contractors propose your own courses. You propose your own schedule. The limitations of that are it is within our predetermined bell schedule. Um, so our upper school classes run for um, a bit longer than our lower school classes. We'll get into looking at a few of those things when we visit the website, but um, we have a predictable bell schedule so families can arrange their lives and schedules accordingly. But you, as the instructors, get to say, well, this is the slot I can teach in. This is the day I can teach in. And um, also, if you become a Scully Academy instructor, you'd receive 90% off a discount on Classical Academic Press products that are directly used for your teaching. So you would still um, own those items. Those would belong to you as an independent, self-employed contractor, um, but you would get them at a, at a very steep discount because you're using them to instruct with us. And then... Um, you would provide your own technology, your home office equipment, et cetera, but um, we provide to our contractors um, the Zoom account they need and the Canvas account. We use Canvas as our learning management system. So um, that's a little peek at the benefits, but that's not all. There's one more fabulous benefit of being a Scully Academy instructor, and that is the professional development you get with um, a complimentary subscription to Classical U. Uh, Classical U is the Netflix for nerds and geeks. We love it so much. It is what um, those who are enthralled by classical education or intrigued and want to know more, it's where you go to learn. Just um, so many um, courses and professional development taught by truly top of the line um, classical educators, professors, um, all kinds of individuals that are part of the classical education renewal, and you get a complimentary subscription to that. In addition, um, there are other, oh, there are other like graduate credits that you can get um, through Templeton Honors College, and also um, these courses on Classical U can work toward 
your continuing education units if you um, have an um a credential with the Association of Christian Schools International, which is something I, I have. So um, lots of opportunities there. Now, I know you're wondering, well, what do you need teachers for? What do you need instructors for? Again, you get the op option of um, proposing what you'd like to teach for us, but this is the insider knowledge. This is the intel for you that what we're really looking for right now and very commonly are these these courses um, always looking for math teachers families are looking for math um, to be taught to their children and um, we're looking for quality instructors to teach it science as well especially upper level this may be a good time to mention that um, we we host classes for third grade through 12th grade, we host the youngest classes. They're called mommy and me classes or reading foundations classes for the youngest um, of children, but that is a partnered with the parents. So the majority of our instruction happens third grade on up and the lion's share of our enrollments are middle and high school. Sixth through 10th, we have two over 200 students in every grade level, sixth through 10th. And um, still quite a robust number in fourth and fifth and in 11th and 12th. We are looking for special needs instructors um, because we do have a center for students with learning differences and we want to serve those families well. So always looking for that if you have a special training or credentialing in that. And I already mentioned our writing and rhetoric department, um, but it's a very popular curriculum line and we're often looking for instructors to teach with that. And um, then last but not least, um, families, uh, we, we have, as I said, Latin instructors, but we have a growing population who looks for Greek instruction, especially in our Orthodox house, um, the St. Raphael School. So if you have any of those qualifications that um, automatically bumps you to the top of some of our interest list, but it does not mean, again, that we're not interested in other things. It's just as you might imagine at a classical school, there's a lot of people attracted to submit proposals to teach, you know, teach humanities, teach history, teach literature, teach grammar, because that's what we um, classical educators are often drawn to. Um, so I thought I would give you a look at um, just in these particular grade levels, some of our most popular courses. Starting at number three, it's writing and rhetoric four is has the heftiest enrollment this year. This varies from year to year, but this is this year. Then Latin one, and then the art of argument. I mean it when I say families want their middle schoolers to learn how to argue, learn how to do it well by, by learning logic. And then overall, here's kind of a rundown of many of the other courses that we offer. Um, like I said, the logic course is at the top, but then on and on, and this list goes on. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of the various courses that we offer in middle school. Now, this may provoke you to say, well, um, you know, don't move the slide yet. I want to know more about what which courses are offered in middle school. If you're on our website, you can go to our all courses page and it literally lists everything that we offer. Um, and upper school, middle school, and lower school. So uh, feel free to check that out as well. Then um, in high school, if you're really drawn to high school, our most popular courses this year, that is the courses with the highest enrollments, Spanish one. As you can imagine, there's a lot of people um, needing their language credits. Biology and introductory physics. These are very popular courses for us. And then as you can see, the, the rest of them as they're listed down in terms of it, student enrollments and how many enroll in any one of these given classes. Um, one thing that I may mention just right here and now is why does the number of enrollments matter? Why would this matter to you? Well, um, two reasons. Um, 
on the, the negative end, the negative end is some people don't want too many students enrolled in their courses because you want to make genuine and personal connections. And so we cap our courses at 15. We typically don't enroll over 15 students in a course to keep it personal and keep the connections genuine. At the same time, our um, instructors are paid according to um, the enrollments insofar as you get a percentage of each enrollment in the course. And so the more enrollments, um, the greater your cut of the pie, so to speak. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but um, I wanted to also mention for lower school, if you're drawn to teach more elementary students, Latin for children A, writing and rhetoric two, and then writing and rhetoric three, all popular courses in our elementary. And um, as you can see, just underneath the writing and rhetoric and Latin, other very popular line for us is our well-ordered language, which is essentially um, our grammar instruction and so forth. So um, very um, popular courses for our, our elementary students to enroll in, and really overall in our school, um, are the curriculum lines that Classical Academic Press publishes. But as I said, there are some that are taught outside of those curriculum lines. For example, fundamentals of mathematics or intro introduction to brush drawing. Art is becoming more and more popular. And if any of you are art instructors or otherwise art teachers, while we don't have a specified department chair, art is a growing interest in our community. And um, so we are interested if, you, um, if art is your specialty. And then I wanted to just make um, an additional note for St. Raphael, because as I said, St. Raphael is, is special and a unique case because it was a, a fully formed school and entity before it, it came under the umbrella of Scola Academy. So as such, its course offerings are um, vast and, and robust in, compared to the other houses of studies. It has a fully integrated liberal arts um, program and catechetical program. So at St. Raphael, the, the third most popular course is iconography, very popularly enrolled, then liberal arts three, and then liberal arts four. And um, as you can see here, just the um, catechism courses are, are right underneath there. So we, for our um, St. Raphael School, we're looking for Orthodox instructors um, that can serve a variety of course opportunities, but what isn't offered in St. Raphael School explicitly and specifically is um, math courses or um, some forms of science like astronomy and things like that are offered, but generalized science like biology, uh, chemistry, physics, those kinds of courses, what we would consider, you know, core courses, those are offered in the Great Hall. So um, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant families mix and mingle and combine in the Great Hall for uh, many of our core courses of studies. So um, I'll, I'll just say here, well, I'll take a breath and allow others to, you know, chime in and also ask questions. These are our two important websites. You know, you've already, I assume, um, since you're here on this webinar, you probably visited our Scola Academy website, and it has a lot of information about the courses that we offer, the hiring process, et cetera. But I just want to draw your attention to the Classical Academic Press website because it is our real parent company. We are a service line underneath Classical Academic Press. And by visiting that website, you're going to find um, really what the lines of publication and oftentimes those publication lines uh, become the courses that we teach, not um, in some in total, but oftentimes that is the case. So um, I'm going to stop the screen share now because this is a great place for um, taking a breath breaking, and I'm going to pass it to um, Presbytera, and I'm going to let you um, answer any questions that have piqued your interest or speak to the tutoring center in general. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Blake. So, um, you know, Scola Academy is doing 
such wonderful work on the forefront of classical education, especially with the ecumenical movement. I just wanted to um, highlight again that if you are interested in the Aquinas House of Studies, the Canterbury House of Studies, or St. Raphael's School, um, that you yourself should be a practicing um, Christian um, in that particular tradition. So that's really key there. So I just want to kind of highlight that. Um, and so um, we look forward to hearing from all of you that may be interested in that. Um, as Dr. Blake said, I am the manager of the tutoring center and center for students with learning differences. And so we always have opportunities for um, our tutors to work directly with our students on a number, as you can see here, a number of um, uh, various disciplines. And uh, we have um, both supplemental tutoring and private course instruction. Um, currently we are serving, uh, I think last count was around 525 um, family assignments that we have served through this year. So, you know, as a tutor, you can work as much as you want, as little as you want. Um, you can work in tandem with being a corporate class instructor as well. Um, and so you can visit our um, actual website here under Scola Academy, Academics, Tutoring Center, and Center for Students with Learning Differences to find out more information. Um, we are always looking for good instructors that would like to work directly one-on-one -on -one, or even in small groups, groups of three, with families and students, and also to, re, um, to uh, reinforce what they're learning in their corporate classrooms. Um, right now, private course instruction is topping supplemental tutoring, 60 percent to 40 percent but we still have that supplemental tutoring as dr blake said we serve families from all areas we have families that are in traditional brick and mortar buildings that they come to us for whether um, student um, with um, learning differences or um, reinforcing supplemental tutoring for math science etc um, and also from other online schools and um from Scola Academy. So um, we have a, a variety of um, families that come to us and we are very thankful to serve them. So if you are interested in, in tutoring center, um, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can uh, get the ball rolling in that way. Um, two questions came up. I'll answer the second one first and then I will punt it over to uh, Mrs. Uh, Allison Haley for this, uh, the first one. But one of the questions that came through the um, chat box was, are the writing and rhetoric and art of argument courses some of those that have been created by CAP? Yes. So the courses that we offer, we do, yep, there it is. Uh, we do use our classical academic press text in those courses. If we have a text, that is a text that we use for the classroom. As Dr. Blake said, math is on the horizon, but has not arrived yet. But most, all, all of our courses do have um, a classical academic press text to reinforce it. Um, then um, the, the first question that came over um, from Eric was, is there training on using Canvas? So one of, one of the things that many of our instructors that have come to us and are, are serving our families um, say and, and rave about is our infrastructure, our student management system, our instructor portal, um, our Zoom, all of that, which Mrs. Allison Haley really keeps running along with uh, uh, David Rosentrader, um, which is another person on our admin team. So um, I'm going to kind of kick it over to her and she'll talk about Canvas and much more. All right. Thank you, Presbytera. Good evening. Um, so yeah, to answer the Canvas question, I think it really fits in a, a bigger question, which is what happens after I sign a contract? Is there is there overall training? How do I acclimate to the school environment in general? 
And so um, the entry point after signing a contract is an onboarding um, beginning of a mentorship process with us that that starts as a 60 minute one on one zoom meeting that you'll have with me and we'll go through um, each of the platforms that you'll need to um, complete your work as a contractor with us. We'll set up those credentials, make sure that you can um, access everything that you need and begin some informal training. And then after that initial process, yes, you will have access to um, an asynchronous um, Canvas training course called Grow with Canvas that's put out by Instructor. That's the company that makes Canvas. Um, it's, it's excellent. It gives you a great foundation um, for how to use the learning management system as, um, as a teacher. So if you have experience with other um, learning management systems, previously we've used Schoology, um, but we have instructors that come to us from a variety of, of teaching backgrounds. And so likely you may have experience in another platform and that's, that's wonderful. Um, a lot of the skills are transferable and our instructors really um, give us feedback that it's a, it's a great uh, easy start and that the learning curve is not steep. So I would not let that be a hurdle. If you have overall um, technical literacy, um, you, you will be uh, well on your way as far as that goes. But yes, we do provide that training as part of the onboarding process. Excellent. And we did have another question come through. I don't know, um, Dr. Blake, if you wanna field this, but as independent contractors, Debbie wrote, are we responsible for collecting tuition and, and or how does that work? Wonderful question. And you can say, praise you the Lord, no. Um, you don't have to do any of the collection. Um, what happened, and, and that's really the benefit for contracting with us because um we're the name, the face, the brand, the attraction, and you become um, the the service provider. But everything that it takes to enroll for a course, pe learn about the course, pay for the course, um, all of that is housed in our website. So you can even see that if you go um, online to our website and go to our all courses page, people can enroll right there, pay right there, or choose a payment plan. What happens for instructors is you get your pay dispersed to you. And to provide some clarification on that, just so that, um, that there's no ambiguity here, that typically the standard arrangement for every contractor is that 60% of the course enrollment cost or price goes to the instructor. So um, you can, you know, kind of do some math on, on that, but let's just, you know, um, hypothetically, you are um, an instructor teaching a, an upper level course, an upper school course, it costs like $725, give or take for a family or $775, give or take for a family for a year. This is a year long course. And so you First of all, if you have one enrollment, you get 60% of that 700 plus dollars. You get 60% of that. Um, with every enrollment that increases, you get uh, that much more. We do have some buffer zone in there because we do recognize that um, there's a there's kind of a threshold in order for you to make a, a sort of profit. So if it if you get fewer than five students enrolled in the class, we do adjust the percentage that you get. So you get a little bit um, larger percentage than 60% uh, because we recognize that those lower enrollment courses um, generate lower amounts of funds for our instructors. And we want to be sensitive to you in that. Um, th but generally, especially after an instructor has established a sort of reputation that, you know, there's kind of a buzz around some instructors. <laughs> and so um, courses can really feel, fill up. And so we have some instructors who have been with us for uh, a number of years. And yes, they do have just um, their own little paparazzi that um, whenever we uh, open enrollments for them, it's like purchase the course, purchase the course. So there is uh, what you should expect as a new instructor is some on-ramping time your first year you're establishing your reputation you're establishing your brand sometimes the course itself is so compelling that a family's like we're just so in desperate need of biology a biology credit that yeah it doesn't matter who the instructor is uh we're enrolling in that course um but at other times, it matters to the family if the name is recognizable or if they've heard from a friend or if they know 
about that. So there is some kind of brand building and we we walk alongside you and help you in that. We welcome you to make your own little, you know, Zoom promo video about here's what I'm going to be teaching, you know, are you interested or or um we put your your face and your course in our newsletters to promote. So it is a um, symbiotic relationship where, you know, we provide you all the support and love and care that we can um, to make you a success. And we count on you as an independent contractor to do what you can on your own channels, you know, whether, whether you're on social media or not, but on your own channels to kind of promote what you're offering. And we don't, we, we don't like to say to any of us who, who have, um, the heart of an educator and the heart of a caretaker, like self-promotion, promote yourself. That that can make all of us squirm a little bit. Um, but what we're offering is a service to families, families that are looking for it and coming to us for that. So we are trying to educate them on what is available to them to serve them. And that's what we ask you to do as an instructor is to let families know what you are making available to them that will be of great and cherished service. So um, that's a little bit of that. I'm going to um, see, do we have any other questions far away and we yes can, all right <laughs> yes we do one of the questions is okay so what is a proposal mm -hmm. so uh very very good question um you know when you come to our website and you click on teach with us you will come to this um part which is called request for proposal and so what you end up doing is you just go through the steps, step one, which you learn more about, of course, us, Spolay Academy. Step two, um, find out who we're looking for. And that's what we're doing also tonight. Um, but this is a wonderful place to get the cliff notes on that. And then step three, what is a proposal? Because that was the, one of the questions. So a proposal um, and and um, I think it, um, the question was, do you have an example? Well, we don't have an example per se, but we definitely have the actual document that you can easily just fill out with all of your information when it comes to the proposal. And all of that, as you can see, is pretty laid out for you. And there's a couple um, further things on here. Then when you're done with that, you actually come to step four, which is submit your proposal and it'll take you to this location here. So this location, you're gonna give us some more um, information, specifically, what are you looking for? Course instruction, tutoring, special needs. It'll take you down through your expertise. You know, what discipline are you an expertise? Um, secondary competencies. Um, what level you would prefer to teach, interest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the place to um, attach your proposal, attach your CV or your resume, transcripts, and then a cover letter. And if you don't have a cover letter, you can actually um, type one out here in the box. And once you submit this, this comes to our admin team, and I'll let Miss Allison Haley kind of take it from there. <laughs> Sure. Um, there are certain certainly seasons to when we are um, most quickly reviewing applicants and things like that. So um, we are approaching that season now. Um, if you're reviewing this video at a later time, then um, just know that there are seasons to the height of our hiring, but we are certainly approaching that. That form is going to come, as um, Presbyterian Maria said, directly to us um, based on the uh, the disciplines that you are most interested in, and we are working that inbox um, very um, regularly at this point. Mm -hmm. So it will get our full attention. We'll read everything you submit, um, and it will go through our full process. So we we uh, welcome you to um, send us your information and help us get to know you a little more through that process. Yes, and and once we do that process, it it. Things are automatic, and so you'll get notifications accordingly. Um, another question came through, uh, Dr. Blake, I think this one's for you. For the math courses, since there are no cap texts yet, is there a generalized scope and sequence that families expect? Does it mirror um, some of the standards that are followed by the public schools? 
Hmm. That's a great question. And also, Allison, I invite you to chime in because Allison is taught in our math department as well. Um, but let me let me um, show share my screen again and then just show you where you can get some of the insider intel into, uh, you know, kind of what our courses include. So if you go to our website, scholaracademy.com, then go to academics and you'll see this all courses page. And under this all courses page, again, it's the full layout of our lower school, middle school and upper school. And since this was a question about math, we'll just go down here to our math program, okay? So let's see, my own daughter is taking a Scully Academy Algebra two course. Let's see, what does that entail? So I'm gonna click here on this Algebra 2 and Trig. You can see we are still taking enrollments in courses, but they're in progress, so they have to get special approval. But what is so um, fabulous is down here, there is the description of the course, um, the skills a student needs, and here, this tab, course materials. And so under course materials, instructors work with our um, web design team and others to make sure we have thoroughly articulated to families kind of in advance what they need in order to complete the course. For you all who are looking at how do we do this as instructors, well, there is some collaboration and cooperation with the department chairs to ensure that um, not everyone is just doing completely their own thing because then we wouldn't want that for, you know, moving from one grade level to the next. If they stayed with Scully Academy, we wouldn't want it to be have wildly different experiences. So that's where the department chair comes in to bring some consolidation and clarity. But to, to your point, these are the, the kind of the digital textbook that has been used, then a print or a digital form, and then the tools that they use. They also use this thing called um, Zeitboard and then a particular calculator. So we try to be upfront with um, what is needed for the, for the students and because you ask about math, that's the one that is kind of like the most uh, different from the others, but that is where you can find, you know, any of our, any of our necessary materials. And just to give you an example, since somebody asked about, you know, well-ordered language or writing and rhetoric, we'll just take a quick peek at that. Uh, for a well-ordered language class, the course materials, it even shows the books that we use, like here, for this one, we go through level 3A and level 3B, and then um, families can go directly to our Classical Academic Press website and, you know, find the products right there, um, Latin, and so right over here is our well-ordered language line. Um, so that's just a quick peek at how people can determine what they need for the course, whether taking it or instructing. And just to piggyback before I, I pass it on to Allison, um, our, our department chairs are there as well to make sure there's alignment in the scope and sequence, um, particularly when it comes to, uh, you know, departments like math that don't have their spine text yet. Just add in that um, the math department's a great place to teach. Um, it's uh, it's a beautiful place to integrate um, um, truth and beauty amongst you know what you're learning, and so it's a really neat um, uh, environment with a, a real um, a growing emphasis on the classical side of things. So if you're if you've taught math in an environment that wasn't classical before, um, we are kind of growing in that and and certainly leaning in very very heavily to that. And Dr. Riley is doing a great job um, leading in the math department. Uh, one part of the question was about. Um, aligning with state standards, basically. Um, so no, we do not align with state standards um, specifically in an itemized fashion. So that being said, a lot of our um, a lot of our courses do have those major milestones, those benchmarks that you're going to look for in a typical, um, as Dr. Blake walked through an Algebra 2 course. Um, I taught Algebra 2 and Trig for two years, and we, we had benchmarks that we followed throughout the year um, on a um, mapped out by quarter that did correspond um, roughly to what other students would typically be learning in that course. 
That being said, I would um, add in a note about geometry. So we do um, bring in some Euclidean geometry as well as modern geometry. So students who go through that course have a really unique experience. You're not just being exposed to the modern um, geometry um, paradigms. You're also getting some of that Euclidean logic that is uh, very classical and uh, a very unique experience for most high school students. So I would say that one's a little bit of an exception that you get both. And I will say that um, if you have been, if your experience is in public education, but you have um, a strong and growing interest for something different, something new, and that you sense that um, things could be otherwise, um, then we welcome you. We invite you to explore. There's some basic reading and what is classical education. You can you can do a lot of exploring, and there's stuff right there on our website that has an explanation. But that too is where um, the subscriptions to classical U and the professional development become so important because we really are quite different from um, what. Um, happens in the traditional state standards public school world. Um, and we we take that as, as a great positive too. We love our friends in education in, in so many different formats, um, doing important and good work. But we think that this is a, um, a way to bless and be a blessing to um, students. And um, so I would just say that if if um, you're unsure about how translatable your you know skills may be, then go ahead and look more on the Classical Academic Press website. Um, you can look up Classical U as well, and on our own website to see um, how familiar you think you fundamentally are with classical education. Thank you so much, Dr. Blake. A few questions came in. I think I can answer um, right off the bat. Um, Debbie wrote, on the RFP, you said to attach transcripts. Is that for our personal schooling transcripts? How far back do you want? Grad school through high school? We're, we're looking for your college transcripts, um, you know, bachelor, if you have a master's, um, those are the transcripts we're looking for. They do not have to be official transcripts. They could be unofficial transcripts, um, but that's what we're looking for as far as that is concerned. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, because I'm not sure, I can't remember if we discussed it or not, but part of the RFP is a statement of faith. Something that um, is important to us at Scully Academy is that all of our instructors regardless of what tradition they come from, they do um, assign and um, believe the statement of faith of the Nicene Creed. As you can see, you know, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, um, and they have to come from a tradition that does hold this as a cornerstone. Um, we, we love all of our um, faithful people, but our school itself does have this as the commonality in our ecumenical vision and mission of the school. So uh, if you have specific questions about that, if, if your um, tradition that you do practice is part of that or not, please just feel free to reach out. All right, so another question, I'm not sure who's gonna answer this one. Um, I'm not sure how to articulate my question, but I love to teach whatever your needs are. I have, for example, years of math and science experience rather than create my own course. Do you ever bring on an instructor in general rather than simply reviewing course proposals? Absolutely. Come on, Jacob. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, that that's more frequently what we are needing is things that have already been in demand in our system. Uh, like we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. People want chemistry or they want algebra one. And there is sort of a standard expectation of what that entails. So we're looking for individuals with competence who can do that. As we said, in, in science, we do have a spine tech. So we're looking for people who can um, instruct with the Navarre text with fidelity. In math, it, it's not it's by no means people winging it. There already is a course map related to it. There are um, agreed upon and accepted resources that are utilized. They're just not published by um, us yet. So um, 
yes, there there is a strong desire for us to um, receive capable, competent, eager instructors who want to teach what we already have needs to deliver on. So in your proposal, um, you can put what you put in the chat. You can put that, that you can say, well, here's the departments of my interests or my areas of expertise. I propose that I could teach this array of things. And then from there, I will say that once we get your proposal, if we, if um, it really, you know, piques our interest, strikes our fancy, scratches an itch, whatever uh, metaphor you want to use, if that's like, oh yes, this could be a, a really solid candidate, then we're going to um, send you um, an opportunity to do a little recorded um, interview. It's through a company called Hireflix, but we ask you five questions and like five minute answers to these questions that we ask. It's kind of like a, a filtering process. So we get to know you a bit better. Once we've got those and we're like, oh yeah, this is you know someone we definitely wanna pursue. Then we're going to take the opportunity to set up a live interaction with you on Zoom um, where likely you and I will visit or uh, Presbyterra and I, some others, sometimes our department chairs will join and we just have a conversation to probe a little bit further and then if you get make it through that, then we um, set up a time for you to teach in a class as a as a guest lecturer, a visiting uh, um, scholar. So you get to do a little teaching sample for us. It's not to it's not to um, you know provoke a lot of pressure or um, anxiety by any means. It's just for you to get a feel what are our classes like, what's the, what's the dynamic like interacting online, and it's for us to get a feel for you. What's your level of confidence, competence, comfort, etc. because we really do try to break the Zoom wall and make people feel like they're having genuine connection with real life humans and our, our courses themselves what I love, one of the many things that I love about School A is that um, we have videos on and chat boxes off. So I don't know if any of you teachers were out there in COVID land when everybody went online. There was a variety of ways that people went about dealing with that and recognizing and being sensitive to f various family situations. We respect all of that. But for, for our courses, we've settled on that um, we want cameras on and then the chat box is off. So there's really voice and face interaction as much as possible. So you do genuinely get to know students, their families, et cetera. Okay. Thank you. One more question. I think you already answered this in a different question, but the, the questions from Eric, do you seek those who have done student teaching first? I have only a degree in chemistry, no education learning. Do you provide instruction in teaching, especially online? Mm, great question. Um, we don't require standard education credentials. That is, um, we do take that into consideration. We obviously take um, work experience into consideration, all those things into the total package of who you are. A substantial number of our contractors are homeschooling moms. De steeped in the discipline and the knowledge of what they have, they maybe they, now everyone is degreed at some level or some form, but, um, um, and many, many of our instructors with advanced degrees, but the point is, um, we don't have a standard cutout profile of we're looking for education majors who did this or that, you know, and got this certification or that certification. Um, I'd love to have a chemist teaching chemistry. So um, we really value, you know, um, subject competence, depth of knowledge, but um, depth of knowledge does no, goes nowhere and does no good if you don't have the translating skills to connect with students and to um, help land the plane in their understanding. So that would be something that we would take seriously into consideration is, do you show the disposition to um, be able to communicate clearly and, you know, move the needle in there in student understanding. Um, so I think that answers that um, there's there's not a real tight profile that we look for. We consider the whole person. And um, so we really do welcome you all to submit to us what we have. You know, the night is young. Get on that uh, request for proposal and just go ahead and knock it out. We'd love to take a look at what you want to um, submit or suggest to us. 
and then be in touch with you shortly. We won't interrupt your Christmas holidays, but um, shortly thereafter. Um, anything else that um, Allison or Presbytery you want to share to wrap up our evening? Okay. I would just say it's a great place to work. It's a really collaborative environment. It's fun to get to know other people in your department. So even though we are remote, you're not um, isolated. So if you are especially a, a younger teacher or someone that's moving from um, um, a different type of professional background, there's lots of support, um, lots of collaboration. There's an observation process. So you get um, you get feedback and you can grow in your craft um, throughout the years. And um, as we've said throughout the, the meeting tonight, um, instructors who are with us for multiple years kind of grow that following. And you're a guest in these families' homes and they get to know you. And we even had um, um, an instructor that uh, families have named their pets after because they love this instructor so very much. And um, so you are um, you are certainly a, a true whole person, even though you would be teaching um, online in a remote setting. Yeah, I will echo that. And um, we as colleagues are very close. Um, uh, we do sometimes get the blessed opportunity to meet in person. And, you know, it, it is such a blessing. And even our families, like, you know, they'll drive through a city and say, hey, can we just stop by and get a hug or say hello? So our community, regardless of the fact that it is online, it is a very personable community and a tight knit one. And so um, I would echo what um, Mrs. Haley said. Um, and, you know, consider joining us. Thank you again. We're so happy that you um, either join us live or watch it, watch this later. We're so happy and we're here to serve you. Um, and we, we are praying with and for you. Um, we believe in God's goodness and his providential oversight. And so we all are seeking his wisdom and his discernment as we move forward and as we um, serve these families who are so dear to him. Um, thank you all so much for joining us this evening, and um, we bid you good night. <laughs>